Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we are talking about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions as well as chemical reactors are important for chemical engineers as well as for chemists. So, it is important to know how exactly we can model a particular chemical reaction that is happening in a particular chemical reactor. And in COMSOL, as I have mentioned, this is a versatile tool. They have multiple physics that includes chemical reactions, that includes acoustics, that includes fluid flow, electric field, magnetic field. So everything you have, so you can incorporate more than one physics and then couple them. So in the context of chemical reactions, maybe your chemical inside your chemical reactor, we can actually put some external electric field just to enhance the mixing in the process. So we can actually look for a particular force field that is being originated from an external electric field and we can incorporate that in the particular chemical reactor. So this is, this is the way we can actually complicate, I should not say complicate, because it is the demand of the physics, it is the demand of the thing you want to achieve. Suppose nowadays people are working with multiple kinds of micro reactors and inside micro reactors, you know, mixing is a challenge. So there are multiple strategies that are being taken care of just to enhance mixing inside a micro reactor. So if you want to design those kind of micro reactors that are subjected to external forces, then we need to couple other physics with this chemical reaction physics. But today we will not be talking about the coupling of external force field, rather I will briefly talk about the basic things which are there in COMSOR, how exactly you have to model a chemical reaction. So in the application library, this is the file available. This is on CSTR, that is continuous star tank reactor. So whoever is a chemical engineer, they might have read it in their undergraduate level. So for them, this is very useful. Who have not who have not read about this CSTR, they can just Google it and can have a glimpse of the CSTR reactor. So from the name itself, you can understand there are tanks and those tanks are in starting continuously. And that's why it is called continuous star tank reactor. And sometimes what happens, you may have multiple tanks. So the feed is coming, reaction is happening in the tank one then it is going to the tank 2, again reaction is happening, then again it goes to the tank 3 and there could be multiple such tanks reactors in series. And, you know, and the equation, the performance equation for all the cases should be different. And in order to model, we should exactly mimic the performance equation in COMSOL. So the most powerful thing in COMSOL is they have inbuilt performance equations for various kind of available well-known reactors. So as I go to reaction engineering and if you go to the settings window, be there on the reaction engineering and then look at the settings window. You can see as I always mention whenever we choose a physics, we should look for the equation. So this is the equation that is being taken and this equation will be solved. So you can see very simply, this is a differential equation, a partial differential equation. This is, this is not a partial differential equation because there is only one dependent variable that is CI and I can be, I can have C1, C2, and C3, for C1, C2 and C3, you have different differential equations. So I can say this is a set of differential equations and this is dependent on time. And these things, uh, I mean, there are multiple terms where from those multiple terms are coming. 
in the next video i will talk about the performance equation of this cstr and then i will actually model that particular reactor and then come to this point so uh, this is about the physics of the problem but for the for today let us understand this is the performance equation of CSTR and COMSOL has it in will. So if you want to model CSTR, what you need to do in the reactor type, you need to choose CSTR constant volume reactor. So if you go to this drop down menu, you can see, uh, let us uh, initially go to the simple reaction. There is a batch reactor. So what is a batch reactor? You have a vessel, you put your reactor reactants and mix it. The reaction starts happening and this is called a simple batch reaction whatever you do in beaker or in a reactor that is your batch reaction so you can see in batch reaction this is simple equation uh, and that's why we can actually choose this particular option from the drop down when we are modeling something which is happening say inside a beaker or into a particular reactor where there is no inflow or outflow. That means it is fixed inside a closed volume. Then you have the option of say if I tell that yeah plug flow. So very simply I'll tell you a plug flow is a kind of tubular reactor where constantly inflow is coming. If the reaction is happening inside the tubular part, part and then after the reaction it is going out from the outflow chamber. So again uh, this is I mean uh, this is a part of chemical engineering people who have done chemical engineering they might have read about plug flow reactor. So I will talk about all the reactors separately in a particular video. And I will just try to match all the equations one to one so that you can build your confidence. Okay, so we talked about reactor type. So the ultimate message is yes, we can model those available reactors. But if what if it is not available, then you have to modify this equation. Somehow you have to model your performance equation. I will also come to that how to add a particular performance equation which is not available in this drop down menu okay that we will be covering now let us go to the other option so you, you can see here they have defined a particular reaction this is the reaction which is happening this is a kind of irreversible reaction you can see because this is going there so those two are the reactants and this is the product. So they have taken, so there are three components or three species. So you can see the, they have taken species, this is the product species, uh, C3, no, this is the reactant one, this is the reactant two and this is the product. So they have taken them separately and you can see there are options of feed inlet. So you can actually enable this or it, you can actually uh, put the inputs from this settings window. So what feed inlet you have like here, they have put V feed and those are defined in parameters and in the variables. So initially whatever things you require, you have to jot down in parameters and variables, then you can call them. And after you define your reaction, uh, reactants and products, and then uh, if you go to your particular reactant, suppose this one. So what you need to define here, you need to define the molar mass of that particular reactor. You need to define the density. The reaction rate is defined here already. And obviously some these are the things which are taken by default, like constant concentration activity so you don't need to bother about it for the time being so once you uh, once you are done uh, setting all the components and also setting the reactions then you in the reaction if you see we need to define those properties like this is the reaction rate 
this is very important because if a reaction is happening you need to define the reaction rate otherwise it will not understand how to calculate for the concentration of the reactants and the products so reaction rate is defined and here re dot kf that is the rate constant re means that reaction engineering physics into multiplied by this concentration so for that herein they are calculating the kf which is taken here and kf is a function of af and all so all those physical parameters are enlisted in the parameter section and those are taken from the standard literature so whenever you model your problem you need to know all the physical parameters you need to jot down the parameters put them into the parameter parameter section and then you have to proceed once you are done then you have to define the time for how long you want to actually simulate for like this i mean like here they have simulated it for four hours so they actually know the time scale of the process similarly when you model your problem you also have to know the time scale of your process and thereby you put the time scale so they have also done a parametric sweep of those parameters like initial t int that is the initial reactor temperature and this is the initial concentration of propylene oxide so uh, so those things they have taken as a parametric study so then if you just click on compute it will start computing so i am not going okay uh, the few parameters are not defined properly that's why i'm getting an error but in today's video uh, the purpose was to show you how exactly reaction engineering physics can be taken to model a particular reaction in a particular chemical reactor so why the error is coming will come in the next video because from the next video we'll be talking about different different reactors and we'll model them so today I stop here. If you are liking our videos, do subscribe to our channel and share those videos with your peers so that I get motivation to upload more videos. Thank you.